thank you very much. We used to, uh, on Christmas Eve, we would wake up about five in the morning and get these three turkeys, and and we had uh, my dad's pickup. We filled it full of presents. We we bought along the the year, and we went out to where the migrant workers were. We had our own Christmas out there with them. And brought food and toys for the kids, and never forget that. And that uh, was Christmas for us. Just a happy bunch of shepherds on the hill Watching over their flocks But the fire against a chill Then the sky opens up Heavenly light Before them stood an angel With a message in the night Go thee down into the town There's a child you've really got to see Be not afraid but be excited You're the first to be invited Go thee down into the town Once you've seen him, tell everyone you see He's the one you've waited for We're not waiting anymore There's a shepherd born to show the way For you and me He was there where heaven said That he'd be found And they knew that they were standing On the holiest of ground Then they thanked the Lord who sent them To this wondrous sight shared with every one of them the message in the night go thee down and to the town there's a child you've really got to see be not afraid but be excited you're the first to be invited go thee down and to the town Once you've seen him, tell everyone you see. He's the one you've waited for. We're not waiting anymore. There's a shepherd born to show the way for you and me. Just a happy bunch of shepherds on the hill. Thank you very much. I love you all. Thank you for having me, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Let's stand together. Let's thank Dennis once again for a job well done. I appreciate him being here with us. Take your Bible tonight. Turn, if you would, to Luke's Gospel, Chapter 2. And uh, I have enjoyed uh, the music, and I'm looking forward to this time in the Word of God tonight. And uh, I thank the Lord for the fact that we can have a good time in God's house and, and just sing about the Christmas season, the, the meaning of it, and uh, also just have this time with family and friends here at Lancaster Baptist Church. Luke chapter 1 is our text tonight. And uh, a different message. I was telling Dennis uh, before the service that this is my 36th Christmas, and I was figuring I'd probably preach around five Christmas messages each December, and so uh, that would put us around somewhere around 200 Christmas messages that I've preached, and and I've loved every one of them, but tonight I'd like to preach uh, from a part of the Christmas story that I've never really preached from before, and I've entitled the message, How to Be a Friend at Christmas. How to Be a Friend at Christmas. A lot of you are going to be with people perhaps in the next seven days that maybe you haven't seen for a while or uh, maybe some awkwardness and and, uh, maybe some witnessing opportunities and just all of these situations require uh, wisdom and there's no better place to gain that wisdom than from the Word of God. And so tonight let's read in Luke chapter 1 and we'll read beginning in verse uh, number 40 and we'll read down through uh, verse number 45. And so follow along with me uh, as we read tonight. In verse number 39, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judah, 
and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is he that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. How to be a friend at Christmas. Let's learn from two women some great lessons tonight on how we can be a blessing to others in the next several days. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight for the word of God, and we thank you for the fact that we can open it and be challenged. Thank you for the music and for the fellowship we've already enjoyed, but now focus our attention onto your word, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. For some reason, this busy season is often a season where we're around many people, and yet being surrounded by many people, you can feel lonely at the same time. Loneliness and sometimes a melancholy spirit are prevalent with people during the holidays. Sometimes uh, medical issues rise and sometimes emotional issues rise during a period of time like we're entering now. The Wall Street Journal reported last week, according to the Surgeon General, that since the pandemic began, rates of psychological distress among young people, including symptoms of anxiety, depression, and mental health disorders, have increased. In a survey of 80,000 youth, they found that depressive and anxiety symptoms doubled during the pandemic, with young people oftentimes at home, oftentimes on the internet, they begin to experience depressive symptoms, 20% experiencing anxiety symptoms. Negative emotions or behaviors such as impulsivity, irritability, and others associated with conditions of ADHD appear to have moderately increased. Early clinical data also concerning these issues showed an increase that in 2021, emergency department visits in the United States for suspected suicide attempts were 51% higher amongst adolescent girls and also much higher amongst adolescent young men. The pandemic by itself has brought about many psychological distresses, much spiritual discouragement as well. And then you enter into the time known as the holidays and for some strange reason, feelings of anxiety and depression uh, can also increase during a time like this. Now, as we look at the life of Mary, we know that she was a godly young woman. We know that she was of strong spiritual and physical stature. She was highly favored young, among women. And yet we also know that at this particular moment, Luke chapter 1, she had just received the most amazing news that any young woman would ever receive. We know that this was overwhelming to her. I believe it would not be a stretch to say somewhat of an anxious spirit could have come initially. And she certainly expressed that when she said, how can this be seeing I know not a man? And as we saw last week in the earlier part of this passage, she could have thought, what is Joseph going to say? And what will others say? And, and this was a very difficult time in her life. And I want to say to you tonight that God brings us to church to strengthen us so that we can help others in their difficult time. This year it might be you helping someone else, and next year it might be them helping you, but all of us are a body, and all of us are here to be ministers of the grace of God. And so it was that Mary finds herself in a position of being overwhelmed, hearing something that was amazing and no doubt intimidating at the same time. And so in the passage before us, we see that Mary immediately goes into the hill country of Judea. She immediately goes to her cousin Elizabeth. In fact, the Bible says in verse 39 that she arose and went into the country with 
haste. It always is curious to me. Am I the type of person that when someone is in their crises, they will come to for spiritual help? I think all of us should want to be that type of a person. All of us should want to be the type of person that would be trustworthy and have a godly example so that when someone is in their moment of wondering or distress or stress or anxiety, that we would be able to minister to them. And it is markedly interesting to me who Mary went to. Mary went to her cousin. She went to the wife of Zacharias, a priest after the course of Abiah, a godly man, a man known amongst his peers as a godly man. She goes to Elizabeth. Elizabeth's name meant Oath of God. Her husband's name meant Jehovah Remembers. Perhaps in the back of her mind she thought Elizabeth will partly understand because Elizabeth is also expecting in her old age and certainly that is a gift from God. And so she immediately runs to a godly woman, her cousin named Elizabeth. Ladies, pray to God that you would be the type of a woman that others could come to in their moment of overwhelming circumstances. And this is the kind of woman that Elizabeth was. And I believe tonight we see a great opportunity here in this Christmas season to learn how to minister to someone in a moment of anxiety, depression, discouragement, or an overwhelmed circumstance. What did Elizabeth do when young Mary came her way? She came to the hills of Judea to find a cousin who was a bit more mature, who might help her find perspective. What does Elizabeth do? Well, the Bible tells us in verse 41, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost and spake out with a loud voice. If you're taking notes tonight, I believe the first step that all of us need to learn in these moments is that we must take time to rejoice with our friend. To rejoice with our friend. You say, but Mary was overwhelmed and, and uh, Mary was, was looking for perspective. And yet Elizabeth knew instantly that there was good to be praised. There was something to be thankful for. Mary came to Elizabeth looking for this perspective, looking for support, no doubt. But it was Elizabeth that was going to give her a blessing, and she rejoiced with Mary. Elizabeth heard the news in Luke 137, and Mary heard the news about Elizabeth. Behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her own age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary had heard those words, with God nothing shall be impossible. And now she is the recipient of this news that she would be the mother of the Christ child. And so she goes to a woman that had been told, with God nothing shall be impossible. And what does Elizabeth do? Does she criticize her? Does she put her down? Does she ask her, what kind of ridiculous news are you telling me, Mary? No. The Bible says Elizabeth rejoiced with her. She was filled with the Holy Ghost. A spirit-controlled response. The fruit of the spirit is love and joy. It was a positive response. The Bible says that she spake out. And as she speaks out, she is giving a blessing unto Mary. She spoke with a loud voice. Blessed art thou among women. And oh, I want you to notice that Elizabeth rejoices with Mary. Can I say tonight that your friends this season and your relatives do not need your gossip? They do not need your negativity. They do not need necessarily your human perspective. What they need is someone that will rejoice with them. Someone that will put their eyes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone that will find the good and praise the good that is happening in their life. I heard about two blondes that got a puzzle for Christmas and I can tell blonde jokes because I have three in my family and they tolerate me. And. Uh, they were celebrating at a restaurant and they were talking and they said, we did it in 30 days. I can't believe we did it in 30 days. And the waitress came by and said, why are you so excited? And they said, it only took us 30 days to put our puzzle together. And the waitress said, well, why is that such a big deal? And one of the ladies said, well, the box said three to five years. 
Now, folks, even if you've got to get into that moment and rejoice a little bit, you've got to learn to find someone where they're at and rejoice with them. I think it took us a few months with our puzzle at the beginning of COVID, so uh, I can't laugh too hard. But there's always something, and no doubt in Mary's circumstance, Elizabeth instinctively knew that, yes, this was overwhelming. It perhaps was something that brought a certain amount of anxiety, but she was quick to rejoice. She has a spirit filled woman spoke out and she spoke into the life of Mary and she reminded Mary that something wonderful was about to happen. Elizabeth rejoiced, but I want you to know something else. And this is awesome. Her baby rejoiced. Her baby rejoiced. Now I'm going to show to you something tonight and I, I've read this many times, but it just didn't really dawn on me until this Christmas. The first person to openly rejoice over the coming of the Christ child was John the Baptist in his mother's womb. Joseph was needing to hear the words, fear not. <laughs> Mary needed to hear the words, fear not. But look at verse 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. It doesn't say the fetus. It doesn't say the tissue. It says the babe leaped in her womb. Do you understand that the scripture takes a very high view of the preborn child? I don't care what politicians say. I don't care what certain medical institutions say. Let's stand on what the word of God says. The babe in the womb was the first to rejoice. And do you understand who John the Baptist was? He was the voice crying out in the wilderness. Do you understand that while he was still in his mother's womb, he, he leaped for joy at the sound of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. I just get excited about the fact that God put a child in Elizabeth's womb, miraculously allowing her and her husband to conceive. And that child, John the Baptist, the, the one with locusts and honey and the, the coat of camel's hair who would baptize hundreds of thousands of people, even while he was in his mother's womb, leapt for joy. What a tremendous testimony. What an amazing, amazing story. John, the Bible tells us in verse 42, uh, was thrilled at what God had done in this place and at this time. And so we see the wonderful story. And notice there, rather in verse 41, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. John was also a man filled with the Spirit. The Bible tells us in verse 15, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. Notice this phrase, even from his mother's womb, Listen, friends, God has a purpose for the life of every human being. God had a purpose for John the Baptist's life, and he's the first one recorded to rejoice in the scripture. Mary came to Elizabeth needing perspective, an older cousin, a godly cousin, a cousin that had been the recipient of divine revelation and miraculous happenings. And what did Mary do? Did Mary put her down and say, ah, did Mary say, ah, you're just trying to keep up with the Joneses? Did Elizabeth say, you're just trying to keep up with the Joneses? No. Elizabeth rejoiced with her friend. Can I propose to you that when you are around friends during this week and they have been the recipient of any kind of a blessing, rejoice with your friend. And even when they're focusing on the negative, remind them of the blessings of God and rejoice over those blessings. I want to encourage you this week. Rejoice with your friend. Secondly, Bless your friend. Bless your friend. Notice in verse 42, it says, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Now, I understand moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, in our family and in our friendships, we cannot bless every action. I get that. I understand that there are times when a reprimand is needed or a word of caution is needed. But I want to tell you that this season is a season in particular when we ought to be intentionally looking to bless our children, to bless our family, to bless those that are around us. There are, there are going to be times when that is impossible, and yet uh, we ought to be looking for those times. And certainly Elizabeth saw it right in front of her. What a great opportunity to bless Mary. She is highly favored among women. I heard about a Christmas time courtroom and the judge was in a pretty good mood and the prisoner walked into the courthouse and, and as the prisoner walked in, the judge said, what are you charged with? And, and the, uh, the prisoner said, I'm charged with doing my Christmas shopping early. 
And uh, the judge said, well, that's, that's no offense. How early were you doing this shopping? And he said, before the store opened. <laughs> it's, it's hard to bless someone when they're living in sin. I get that. But sometimes teachers, parents, those of us in authority, we can be quick to see what is wrong and we can miss something that is so very right. And the best way to help someone reach their potential is to catch someone doing something right and to bless them for it. And we see Elizabeth, the wiser older cousin, looking at Mary, full of wonderment, wanting perspective, and Elizabeth quickly blesses this young woman. She blesses her verbally. In fact, in verse 42, where it says, blessed art thou among women, she is saying, you are most blessed. We are celebrating with praise what God has done to you uh, in your life. Elizabeth is saying to Mary how blessed she is to be carrying the Christ child. May I say tonight that only a true friend can rejoice with someone when they are being blessed. It takes a godly person to see the other guy about your age get the promotion and to be glad for him. It takes a true friend to see someone receive the Christmas gift that you wanted and to be glad for them. And we see a great testimony here in Elizabeth's life that she was willing to bless verbally, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. She blessed verbally. But I want you to see also she blessed with a pure heart. She blessed with a pure heart. You know, the Bible says in verse 45, blessed is he that believed, is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. There is no evidence whatsoever that Elizabeth had any competition, that she had any jealousy. She, from a pure heart, praises Mary's faith. She praises Mary for believing the promise of God. She assures Mary of the fulfillment of all the things that have been told for her, for there shall be a performance of this. Here we see that Elizabeth, as a true friend, does nothing but encourage and help Mary along. Mary still had to go back to Nazareth. Mary still had to face Joseph. And so it was that Elizabeth would lift her up and Elizabeth would give her the blessing. You see, a friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friends. How many of you can see in this little meeting in the Judean countryside that Elizabeth is sharpening Mary? She's encouraging Mary for the holy task that she had. And I'm telling you that when you encourage a youngster around here, when you encourage a new Christian around here, you never know who you might be encouraging. You may be encouraging someone that will be greatly used of God. And you may discourage them too. We have the ability to encourage or to discourage. And what we see in Elizabeth was a woman truly encouraging the mother of Jesus Christ. So how can we be a good friend this Christmas season? First, rejoice with your friend. Have you ever seen two kids and one kid gets an awesome Christmas present? I remember years ago, we were living in Korea, and I was going through a little bit of a rough patch as a teenager, and I had wanted, I had wanted certain things for Christmas, and you know how you kind of give hints to your parents. And my brother, uh, Mark, he had wanted some things, and sure enough, he got a pair of Nike tennis shoes, got some other things. And my dad gave to me a letter, and he said, Paul, because of your love for the Bible, God's Word, and because of your understanding of Israel being God's chosen nation, and because they have reclaimed the land. We have planted a tree in Israel in your honor to support the Zionist movement. True story. I know. Sick, parent, sick family. I know. That's what's wrong with me. I'm literally sitting there holding that letter. I wasn't even sure what the Zionist movement really was. I didn't know if I really wanted a tree planted in Israel in my honor. And I'm looking at my brother's Nike tennis shoes, and I was having a hard time having a good attitude. <laughs> they made up for it later. They brought some shoes and some stuff out, by the way. But sometimes it's hard to rejoice when you think maybe someone else is getting something better or doing something greater. But Elizabeth teaches us, rejoice with your friend. 
bless your friend, and then perhaps most importantly, believe with your friend. Believe with your friend. Look at verse 43. And whence is this to me, watch this now, that the mother of, what are the next two words? The mother of whom? My Lord shall come to me. You have no greater friend than the friend who believes in your Lord. The friend who believes in your mission for the Lord. Elizabeth shared the faith of Mary. In her humility, she says, and whence is this to me? In other words, who am I that you would even come and tell me this? The mother of my Lord. Immediately she acknowledges to Mary, Mary, I'm not hearing this as some fairy tale, some religious story. You will bring my Lord into this world physically. I have already put my faith in the child that you will bring into this world. My son has just leapt for joy, also being full of the Holy Spirit. And here we see that Elizabeth is believing with her friend. May I say tonight, your best friends should be those who share your faith and encourage you in your faith. Now, you can be a friend to everyone in your family, even the unsaved, and you should be. But your best friends should be those who share your faith and encourage you in your faith. Mary is given reassurance that what is happening is the Lord. Your best friends assure you that God is at work. Your best friends remind you that the Lord is working on your behalf. I think of Thomas as Thomas came to Jesus and he saw the scars and he said to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And Jesus received that worship. And here Elizabeth says that you are bringing my Lord into this world, the mother of my Lord. Teenagers, may I say to you tonight, whether you're in this room or watching online, Mary was a wise teenager. And remember that she was a teenager. Mary went to a friend that would encourage her faith. And I say this to the teenagers and I say this to the teenage girls and boys and to the entire church family. Choose your friends wisely. Look for friends that will encourage your faith, not discourage you from your faith. You can say hi and be a friend to everyone, but I would not recommend being close to someone who speaks against the Lord, who speaks against his word, who's always degrading the, those who teach the word or finding the negative in every situation. Thank God that when Mary went to Elizabeth, Elizabeth edified her in her faith. She encouraged her in her faith. Elizabeth shared her faith. She said, my Lord and your Lord, this is what we have in common and then Elizabeth showed the response of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us in verse 43, whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Elizabeth, as the text tells us, was full of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance. The Bible is clear that there are certain characteristics to be found in the life of a person who is walking in the Spirit. No matter what the trial, no matter what the anxiety, the Spirit of God can give joy, peace, long-suffering. The flesh cannot provide these things, but the Spirit of God can. Elizabeth was the older cousin who gave perspective, who had joy, who gave blessing, who allowed her cousin to freely rejoice and know that she was greatly used of God. And you, ladies, and you gentlemen, and all of us, 2,000 years later, can be an Elizabeth to someone that might need that nudge of encouragement this Christmas. What kind of a friend are you? Are you like Elizabeth? Someone that can bring comfort and perspective? Someone that can encourage someone else's faith? Elizabeth, see it in your mind. Mary hears the message. 
Mary is telling the angel, how can these things be, seeing I know not a man? She immediately and with haste goes to her friend Elizabeth. Elizabeth, the older cousin, the godly cousin, married to the man of God, a priest, a, a, a woman that had conceived in her older age and, and, and someone she'd always looked up to. And what does Elizabeth do? Elizabeth rejoices with her. She speaks with a loud voice and even the baby in her womb rejoices with Mary. Elizabeth blesses Mary. Mary, you're blessed. You're favored. God's hand is on you. God's going to do something great with your life. I know this is a second or third degree application, but can I encourage you? Bless your children this Christmas. Bless those around you with the great potential they have to be used of God. Elizabeth rejoiced. Elizabeth blessed. But most of all, Elizabeth believed. She said, Mary, that baby that you're carrying, that's my Lord. I wonder tonight, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord? Is he your Lord and your Savior tonight? You see, you don't have to look at Mary you don't have to look at Joseph and the Christmas story just as an historical event. You can make it personal tonight because that's what Elizabeth did. She didn't say, well, Mary, that's your story. You've got your deal. I've got my deal. Good luck to you. No. She said, that's my Lord you're carrying. That's my Savior. She owned and had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. She owned the truth. I believe many of you and most of you have accepted Christ as Savior. But if there's someone here tonight that has never shared the faith, you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, I would encourage you to do what Elizabeth did. And I would encourage you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ and to believe that he indeed is the virgin-born Son of God. All this month, God has been showing us that he can do significant things with insignificant people if we would but walk in the Spirit. Joseph, a carpenter. Mary, an unsuspect, unsuspecting teenager. Shepherds out in the field doing hard labor. God did not choose to unravel before us the Christmas story in palaces. God chose to bring it right down where any one of us could be a part of that story by simply putting faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Elizabeth did. Like Thomas, my Lord and my God, Mary and Elizabeth were able to share the Lord as their personal Lord and their personal Savior. How about it this week? Be a friend to someone. Let God use you like he used Elizabeth. Rejoice with someone. Bless someone and believe with someone that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Let's stand together, shall we? Our Father in heaven, we want to pause at this time and just thank you. We want to thank you, Lord, for loving us, though we are unworthy, for giving us the opportunity to know you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, tonight we have seen the story of Mary and Elizabeth, two women blessed beyond measure. And we have seen Mary, after hearing from the angel, running to her cousin, making haste. And the text shows us a young woman who was godly, but a young woman whose heart was no doubt filled with questions. Thank you, Lord, that you used Elizabeth to calm and to strengthen Mary. And so help us in that same way tonight. Our heads are bowed tonight and our eyes are closed for just a moment. I'd like to just ask you for just a moment, how many of you in this room could say with Mary and Elizabeth that Jesus is my Lord and Savior? How many of you could agree with the two of them on that? Could you lift your hand tonight if that's your testimony? Isn't that great that Elizabeth said, Boy, who am I to hear this about my Lord? Is there anyone here tonight who would say, Pastor Chapel, I've heard the music, I've heard the message, 
but I don't know that I can say Jesus is my Lord. I don't know that I can say that Jesus is in my life. And if you're here tonight and you're not sure that Jesus Christ is your Lord living within you personally, I'd like to pray for you. Maybe you did not raise your hand a moment ago. I'd like to pray with you if I may. Is there someone like that, Pastor Chapel? I don't know that I can agree with that I'd, or that I have the knowledge of that truth that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. But I would like to know that. And if there's someone like that here tonight and you'd like to know for sure that Christ is in your heart, that Jesus Christ is your Lord, may I pray for you tonight? Would you just quietly just lift up your hand and hold it for just a moment? Pastor Chapel, I would like to know Christ as my Lord and Savior. I don't know him that way now, but I'd like to know him that way. Please pray for me. Anyone like that tonight? Anyone at all? If you have questions about the Lord Jesus, please see me or one of our church members afterwards. We'd love to talk to you about Christ and how you can know him personally. How many of you would say, Pastor, I understand there's a lot of anxiety in this world. The pandemic hasn't helped. Sometimes the holidays bring it on. But God spoke to me tonight that I would like to be like Elizabeth. I'd like to be that one that could rejoice and bless and believe. And Pastor, would you pray with me that I might edify those around me this week? I want to be an Elizabeth in someone's life by the grace of God. Would you lift your hand tonight? Maybe there's someone on your mind, maybe a child, a family member, a friend, somebody that needs an Elizabeth in their life. Fellas, we can be this. We can be this for someone. Is there someone else? Pastor, pray with me. I want to be a blessing like that. I want to be a blessing. Awesome. Awesome. What a great friend Elizabeth was. What a great cousin. Let's be that for someone else. Father, use us this week to be the Elizabeth that someone needs. Help us to bless and encourage others around us. And if they don't know our Savior, may they be able to say someday, my Lord, my Savior. And Father, we pray that if there's one here without Christ, that they would come to know you tonight as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to sing a song of invitation. Perhaps you'd like to come and even pray tonight. And Elizabeth in prayer, Lord, make me a blessing. Lord, help me to encourage someone this week. Maybe God would use you in that special way. And if you're not sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord, some of our pastoral staff will be here at the front. They can open up a Bible and show you what that really means to have Jesus Christ as your Savior. As Brother William sings, if God has spoken your heart, if you'd like to come and pray or talk to one of these men, you come right now as we sing. Have your way, Lord, have your way. You're the potter, I'm the clay. The altar is open. Hold you come. and make me yours today. Have your way, Lord, have your way. Let's sing one more verse together. Have your way, Lord, have your way. You're the potter, I'm the clay. Mold and make me yours today. Have your way, Lord, have your way. Well, how many of you can almost picture in your mind Elizabeth with those words, calming Mary, encouraging Mary, and just encouraging Mary on her mission from the Lord. And let's be that to someone this week. I know that God wants to use us in that way. A couple of quick announcements. If you did not get your 2022 prayer magnet, those are out and available in the guest service areas. Be sure to stop by and get one tonight. There's no midweek connection groups this week, but we will have our uh, Christmas Eve candlelight service Friday night at five o'clock right here in this auditorium. Please make a note of that. And we'll have no meetings on Saturday this week, of course, Christmas morning. But we look forward to a great time in God's house uh, this coming Sunday morning. I believe I have a message that will encourage your heart as we approach the new year. And we're looking forward to that. It's been a wonderful day. I trust that you have a very Merry Christmas. Terry and I certainly love you and love serving the Lord with you. And this has been a fun Christmas season. And I believe that we have some great times still in store. Let me encourage you to take some time over the next couple weeks and just sit down with your Bible and maybe with a notepad and just write out some things that you would like to see in the new year. 
You know, a lot of people don't even try to make New Year's resolutions like, ah, I never hit them. But like I've always said, he who aims at nothing hits it every time. And I want you to jot some things down regarding your Bible reading, your prayer, your witness for Christ in the new year. Some of our staff this week were sharing with me how many doors they want to knock on, how many people they want to lead to the Lord. And it encouraged my heart. And I want to encourage you to do the same thing over the next few weeks. Just be seeking the Lord. Lord, how can you use me to be a blessing like Elizabeth in the new year? And you know what? God will show you exactly what you need to see. He'll help you along the way. And uh, you'll, be, uh, you'll be the benefactor of that time, no doubt, taking that time with the Lord. I'll be out in the West Wing lobby. Uh, don't forget to stop by guest services if you have other questions. And it's been a wonderful day. Merry Christmas. We love you. May God richly bless you.